you are tuning in to the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Angels and Healing Light Show. Sit back, relax, and be open to receive the angelic messages and healing channel through your host, Laura Romero. Mm, happy Tuesday and good morning, my Angels and Healing Light family. I hope everyone is doing fantastic, and thanks for being with me again today. It's so good to have this opportunity to shine the light of God and the angels to everyone and give beautiful messages of guidance and love and support, and so thank you for being here. My name is Laura Romero. I am an angel intuitive, and a spiritual healer. My website is angelsandhealinglight.com, so please check it out. And you can always reach me by email at laura at angelsandhealinglight.com. So today I'm very, very pleased to bring back one of my absolute favorite people in the whole wide world and, in my, my opinion, my learned opinion, one of the best psychic mediums in the whole wide world, and that's Carol Ann Carey. Carol Ann is, uh, she's just a wonderful lady. She's very intuitive. She's very knowledgeable. She's very genuine. And her readings come with such beautiful insight, healing, compassion, and she always makes me laugh. Whether she tries to or not, she just makes me laugh. And so that's one of the things that I love about her readings is there's always some laughter involved um, at a time where it can be really, really uh deeply serious. Uh, She has a beautiful practice here in our beautiful Sarasota, Florida. And thank you, Caroline, for joining. Good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. It's very exciting to be here, even though I just woke (laughs) up, and I'm really grateful that we are not on YouTube, like, seeing each other. (laughs) (laughs) I agree that, to do morning be... shows only if they're radio, you know. <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> hey, Carol Ann, guess who's with me in the studio today? My mother-in-law, Daisy, my brother-in-law, Marillo, my husband, Marcello. They're all all here visiting from Brazil. Well, my husband's always here. But my brother-in-law and mom, Daisy, are here visiting from Brazil. And they, uh, you know them. They know you. So, Um, It's really nice to have them here listening live to the show. And so say hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to talk to your loved ones in spirit. You are my Brazilian connection, and I'm thrilled to have met you. All right. So, Carol Ann, what is new and exciting in the world of psychic mediumship? Uh, I know that you are always learning, you're always teaching, you're always discovering. You, you're always trying to lead and teach other people into, into the, the, the ideas of what's possible and into the possibilities of things that happen on the other side that most of us can't see or or know about it, but, you, but I know you're, you're always working to try to educate people and help them heal. So what's new and exciting on your side of psychic mediumship? Well, let's see. Actually, quite a bit. Um, where should I start? Well, I had a fabulous interview with uh, Kai Mugi, who is the best physical medium in the world. And a lot of people are not familiar with that aspect of mediumship. There is mental mediumship, which is what I do, uh, contacting people in the spirit world and assuring people of the continuation of life after death. What Kai does is physical mediumship, which is physical phenomena. Um, He has brought through a port. Uh, which are objects from spirit that are materialized, dematerialized. It's really crazy. Uh, I've seen this work before. I've been involved with that kind of work in my own private circle that we had uh, several years ago. And we were starting to develop 
uh, some ectoplasm and things like that, which is kind of weird terms, you know, for people who are not familiar with physical mediumship. But in any event, it is an aspect of mediumship. Uh, Helen Duncan did it. Uh, Helen Duncan was uh, jailed uh, for supposedly uh, releasing details uh, during wartime. They consider her a traitor or they were worried that she had her hands on some inside information about uh, boats that were sunk and stuff like that. So she was arrested and spent, mm-hmm. I think it was nine months in jail uh, during World War II. And subsequently, when she re- was released from jail, Winston Churchill visited her and tried to lobby on her behalf to re- get her released. Um, I'm in contact with her daughter, her granddaughter, Margaret, and they're still trying to clear her name about this. Because after Helen was released from jail, she did do some more seances. And at one, even though she was supposed to be safe, the police broke in and she was physically harmed by the ectoplasm uh, because of the interruption of the seance. So it went back, the ectoplasm went back in her body and ended up burning her. And she died about uh, five or six weeks later. So her family is a tragic situation. So um, I've had the opportunity to meet with these people, speak to them at least, or FaceTime and stuff like that. So that's been very interesting with the radio show, with my own radio show in the Psychic Flow. So I've met people that have been in my background and that I wanted to pull forward and get to know better. So I've had that opportunity. Um, I've been doing private readings in Sarasota in my office, and that's been going well. Uh, What else is going on? Uh, well, let me just interject that I heard your interview with Kai, and it was absolutely fascinating. And ladies and gentlemen, you can hear this too um, archived. You can reach out to Carol Ann um, for an archive version of it. But she has a show every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on Goldilocks Production. It's called In the Psychic Flow. So where she has wonderful guests, but also talks and teaches so much about our loved ones that have gone on before us. And, you know, we've all lost someone we love. So I think that the more we learn about this, the the happier we are. So please, Thursday nights, 8 p.m., check in with Carol Ann's show. You won't be disappointed. And looking for her past interviews, just uh, check out Goldilocks Productions or Carol Ann. Carol Ann, what is your website, please? Uh, CarolAnnCarry.com. Beautiful. That's C A R E Y. Carol Ann. Right. C A R O L A N C A R E Y dot com. You can always get right. in touch with me and I can get in touch with you. So I'm always looking forward to hearing all of the wonderful things that you discover and learn and reach out uh, and hand out to the rest of us that, that are so fascinated by the things that go on. Um, I think you're truly gifted at what you do. Thank you. Carolyn, would Thank you like you. to take, I love what I do. Like take a call? I know you do. I know you do. Okay, and, sure, um, sure. I know you love what sure. you do, and you're an excellent teacher. So, Thanks. All right. Well, it looks like we've got a caller, and uh, let's take caller area code 941. Say hello. Hi, who is this? Hello, this is Millicent Grant. Good morning, Millicent. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, you have a question for Carol Ann? I do. I have my um, husband's sister and her husband here and my son-in-law, and we're looking for a message from my husband, Skip, that passed a couple years ago. Hmm. Uh, I want to assure you, first of all, that um, he is aptly named Skip because I'm I'm feeling uh, a flutter in his chest as he comes forward, excited to speak to you. It's like his heart skips a beat, and he's kind of skippy over there, so he's kind of uh, blending in with his nickname, I take it. Um, that he is very happy uh, to be with loved ones and family on the other side. Um, I want to, the impression that I get from him is that he departed this life I want to say almost unexpectedly. Uh, would that That's be right. true? Like I, yeah. So it was uh, yeah. not like a lot of choice in this matter. 
he shows me uh, when he passes, and I feel there's like a crushing feeling uh, with him. Like I feel like I can't breathe. I feel crushed. I feel uh, sudden, like it's a sudden thing um, that I can't control anything. And I feel like I'm lifted out of my human body and I'm walking down a hallway. And it's sort of like maybe a hospital hallway or something like that. There's overhead lighting, like fluorescent lighting. He's walking down this hallway. And he gets to the end, and he keeps turning back over his shoulder like, shouldn't I be going that way? And the light at the end is brighter, so he's going that, he's going away towards where he passed. Um, so that was his little journey, uh, sort of wondering if he should go back. And But he was pulled forward, so he went forward, went to the end of this hallway, and it opened up into what he presumes now or knows now is heaven. There are loved ones there. Uh, he says being, some kind of beings. Uh, and I want to let you know. Now he's talking about, he's switching now. I want to let you know that there is uh, food here. He's very happy to announce that. Uh, <laughs> there is family there. I don't know if he was a good, a hefty eater, but he uh, keeps talking about some kind of like spinach pie or something like that that's greek i think anyway um <clears throat> they always show me food because that happens to be of interest to me there is also a dog on that side that greeted him um what also his messages like? uh, this i feel like there's uh some darkness to it it's a, a larger dog not a small one not huge but i would say uh retriever size something around that uh, that size, um, and there seems to be like black and white as well. So I don't know if this identifies any of the animals that you've lost, but there, I feel like there's a gathering here, a gathering of uh, souls and uh, animals on that other side around a table. Uh, so I want to let you know that he is reconnected with family over there. His it, many blessings. Uh, also to his sister, he says to his sister. Does the name Helen mean anything to you? No, I can't think of anything. Okay, because he is saying the, the name of Helen. That's okay. We'll put it on the side. I may have misinterpreted this. Um, I feel this is a. He's very genuine um, in the way he relates to people. Would that sound like Skip? Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like um, people relate to him. He is, seems like uh, there's a, a generosity in his character. Um, I, I'm sorry that I had to leave so fast. Like I, I wasn't prepared. I felt like I wasn't ready. Um, and I felt like I left things undone. Would you be able to accept that? Yeah, he was killed by a drunk driver. He was on a motorcycle. Okay, and then, then maybe that's what the crushing feeling was. Yes. Um, he was. He was crushed. Okay. I, think I apologize. That's what. Yeah, it was terrible. Okay, I apologize for bringing that graphic detail forward, but sometimes so, this is what they give me. Uh, yeah. So I feel like that he kept looking as he walked away from his body. He kept looking back, like, "Are you sure I can't get back in there?" You know. So he didn't yeah. want to leave, but I think th there was no way that he could have been returned to that. Right. Uh, body, so there was no choice in the matter. But I want to say to you that he was welcomed on the other side by family and friends. He has a friend in particular he speaks about. Um, this is a gentleman and uh, maybe a couple. So I don't know if this was a cousin, a friend, a brother, some something close enough to maybe one of you would recognize that. But there's a friendship over there. Um, with my father, with my father, something with his father. Has his father passed? Yes. Yeah, okay, so I am with my father. I believe his mother has passed as well, but it particularly mentions his father. Um, so there's a connection there. Is there anything that you wanted to ask him? I want to say, is there Catholicism in the family or some kind of religious? Yeah, they're um, very Catholic. Okay. Okay, Irish uh, because they do Irish. Oh, there you go. Um, I feel there's, uh, you know, I wanted to say a cross, and I guess maybe it would be a Celtic cross. I want to say 
something about a monument. I want to say something about remembrance or in oh prayer my God, as this well. There was a so l- crazy. We uh, we put up a roadside memorial where the accident happened, and my son-in-law is in communication with the state highway department to put up a permanent monument. And uh, oh, nice. Yeah, we we just had the final um, sentencing of the drunk driver yesterday, and we went by the site twice yesterday, once on the way to the court and once on the way back. Hmm. Very good. Thank you for giving me that confirmation. Uh, the reason I was I can't listening to you because I have one foot on the other side at the moment, and he is saying to me, um, I'm glad there was a resolution to this accident. For your sake, um, is what he says. Um, Does, that there was he some justice. Uh, this yeah, is part of his too. message is saying. Um, I just want to let you know he holds no. Uh, there are no hard feelings on the other side. Uh, that's why I only speak to people who have transitioned into the heavens or to the other side. They go through a life review. Uh, your husband has reviewed that accident. And though he knows the other driver was totally at fault and it was unexpected, there is a compassion, believe it or not, for for that person. Um, He is glad that justice prevailed for you, that you needed the justice. Um, He does not express any anger or disgust at this person um, because he's in heaven. And they they learn that that just doesn't apply there. However, he's very understanding about your loss, and I, I also want to say to you, your husband is around a lot, and I feel like there's something about China. He wants to thank you for, about the monument. Thank you for uh, confirming that for him. Also, I want to talk about chiming, something about chiming, a clock chiming or chimes, chiming, something about chimes. Uh, um, wind chimes. Do you understand that? Yeah, wind chimes. Okay. He is talking about that, and that's how you know he's around. Um, So he is able to come back and forth between worlds, and he's very happy about that. I want to speak about a granddaughter or a grandchild. Would you understand that? We have three grandsons. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's expected. He's talking about the grandchildren. I'm not going to project, but there may be a fourth. He's telling me there may be four. All right? So. Very uh, Yeah, okay. Uh, And it might be a girl, so that's just the feeling. He's just imparting that, but he loves his grandchildren and wants to grab them. I got one kid, I like to grab him by his ears. Um, When I I hug him, I like to grab him. Is that right? He used to do that to Troy, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Fantastic. Um, And I want to also say to you... You're welcome. A lot of love from Skip, and he's doing great, and he's keeping an eye on you, okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm. That was a beautiful message. Thanks, Carol Ann. Oh, you're welcome. I get, so I get on a roll, and I don't stop, so I'm sorry. So just cut me off any time. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I believe that what you do is so very healing and so you know that. I tell you that all the time. So mm-hmm. that was really nice. But I like the fact that our loved ones communicate with us in a variety of ways. And sometimes it takes a while to figure out or understand or believe even that they're announcing themselves in different ways. Like you said, for Skip, it's the wind chimes. For some people, yeah. it's birds. For others, mm-hmm. they just know or see or hear. So I, I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that our loved ones are always poking their heads in and aware of what's happening, um, mm-hmm. you know, saying hi when they can or if they want to in a variety of ways. And yes, you know, I think they realize uh, one of the gifts that they receive over there are abilities um, – they communicate is the the one to communicate with us in in various methods, and some people will favor some methods over other. Like some people like uh, can to mess around with electronics. 
um, what they do is it's not so much they will make a song come on the radio. They will put you in the awareness for that in time for that song to come on the the radio. You know what I mean? They will put you mm-hmm. in the car uh, so that you will hear that song when it comes on. Um, they will bring your awareness to the bird in the backyard. Um, they don't always send the bird. They know the bird is going to be there, and they want you to see it. So they will have your attention drawn to it at a particular time. We think it's accidental, but it's all synchronistic in a way. I hope I'm explaining that well enough. Um, So there are signs. I'm not saying make signs out of everything, but there are signs that our loved ones do send to us. Because love never dies. They want us to know that they still care about us and that they are still aware of what's going on, and they try to help us uh, when they can. They have their own uh, journey now that they have to be on. They review their life. They review things that they've done or could have done better. Um, so they have at the same time that they're keeping an eye on us, they are progressing on the other side. That's why I prefer to deal with those who have made a transition into the heavens that have accepted God's love in particular. Um, those are the people that I deal with. I don't do paranormal, like residuals or hauntings. I can, but I, I choose not to do that. I would like mm-hmm. to learn from those who have passed. And and they teach us how to live, um, to enjoy each day, to enjoy what we have, to appreciate the smaller things, uh, not to let hard feelings ruin a family or a relationship because it's not that important, you know. So mm-hmm. I've learned a lot listening to your loved ones. I really have, and I am very grateful for that. I think that um, it's being able to, you know, who to thunk it years and years ago? Who to thunk that we'd be able to know so much about what happens and to hopefully let people know that there's something really wonderful to look forward to when it's our time to go there and go to heaven and meet the, our family. And, you know, when I, um, working with animals as an animal communicator is one of the things that I do. And I've done readings on people, horses who know that there's a new baby in the family. I wow. just, you know, so it's not just people, but our animals that we love so so dearly, they are still aware of what's happening in our lives. Um, mm-hmm. So just, you know, it's, I think it's a beautiful connection. Dogs, horses, birds, there are even snakes, you know. Snakes have a, a wonderful ability and all kinds of animals make have ability to bond with us and vice versa. But once they do, they're still part of our lives and they're still aware of what's happening uh, it's to me that's just so heartwarming. And not so only that, they help us um, with our next pet. You know, sometimes they help us pick out uh, our next dog or our next cat and encourage us to do that because some people will lose a dog or cat and say, I'm never going to get another one. It's It just hurts too much. And yeah. um, they remind us that we're here as guardians for them and that there's always another animal that needs us. You know, so that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, can I say, uh, my mom, by the way, everybody is, you know, my mom, Rini, she listens to every show, and I always make everybody wave to her. That's my joke because we're on the radio. So today she's unfortunately in the hospital, and mm. I would sure appreciate everybody if you get an opportunity to send some healing light and blessings to my mom, Rini. Uh, may, she might be listening today, but if so, um, hi, Mom. <laughs> but if you remember, please. Hi, Rini. I hope you some... feel better soon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if you can send some healing and prayers to my mom, Rini, I would really appreciate that. She is not enjoying herself, I can tell you that much. Oh, not too bad. You know, laying around in the hospital, it's like almost like waiting for a plane. You just sit and wait and wait and wait and wait in the most uncomfortable spot possible. But right. hopefully she'll be be back home soon. 
All right. Are you ready Good. for another caller, Ms. Carol Ann? Oh, sure. Fantastic. Well, I have area code 631. Good morning to you. Hello, area code 631. Are you out there? Press the number one. Yeah, if you would like to talk to Carol Ann, just press the number one, raise your hand, and my beautiful producer, Tiffany, will get a, get us all connected. So just, uh, I don't know where 631 went. All right. Well, I guess they are not available right now. That's okay. Well, maybe they'll come back. Maybe they'll come back. Yeah. You know, I did want to tell you um, something you might find interesting. I had stumbled across uh, a program that I wanted to study, and there were messages from Jesus and from the celestial beings through James E. Paget. I think it's James E. Paget. Uh, and the books are entitled uh, The True Gospel from Jesus of Nazareth. There are several volumes of messages that James Paget, who was not a medium, um, channeled, uh, automatic writing, wrote down from celestial beings. And so I've always just been very happy just talking to dead people, you know. And that's fine with me. I like what I do. I don't need to do any a lot of anything else. This is what I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. But I was very fascinated by this work about what heaven is truly like. And I wanted to see if it correlated, you know, different spheres of heaven that our loved ones progress on the other side. And uh, it's about divine love and about what they've learned over there and those kind of things. And about the Gospels, the true meaning of the Gospels. Uh, And so much of our Bible has been misconstrued and interjected and made up and are blatantly wrong. So I found that fascinating work. But because they're celestial beings like St. Francis of Assisi, the Apostles, um, I thought it kind of jived with what you do, the angels, you know. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. So I'm just on this exploration. So I do recommend this work, uh, these works, these volumes of work to anyone. And so I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's my summer study at the moment, which has James only Pat- just started. James Paget. Yeah, P-A-D-G-E-T-T. I will look that up. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I thought it would resonate and it with you. It looks like the pageant messages in the true gospel revealed anew by Jesus and some other some other right. writings. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, Very I, interesting. I, I call upon Jesus a lot when I do my healing work, and I learned when I was studying Reiki that he actually shows up. Uh, and I mm-hmm. say actually because just like meeting St. Michael, Archangel Michael, I didn't know that it was possible for them to actually be here in person. You, you know, it was. I always thought, okay, well, when you die and you go to heaven, that's when you meet all those wonderful folks, wonderful beings. But the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is they're just, they're all wanting to help us all the time. And I know I, I you know, repeat this every week. But they love to help us marry Jesus, the angels, of course, God. You don't have to be anybody special. You don't have to be religious. You don't. Have to, you just have to ask for help. And I was absolutely stunned when I was doing Reiki on someone, and I just knew it was Jesus, and it was amazing because he's so quiet. He's a little funny, a little, you know, quiet sense of humor, but he was so quiet, and he just comes, and he put his hands over mine, and they and they sort of interspersed with mine, and I almost froze, like, what in the world is this? But I knew who it was, and just such an overwhelming feeling of love, and then boom, we did our Reiki, and that was it. So I said, okay, well, this is possible too. So Jesus is just there when you need him, and you don't have to be any kind of religious belief or practitioner. 
You just have to ask from your heart. And and they come. Mother Mary's another one that I love to work with. And I just love to be around her energy. It's just profoundly loving and compassionate. Oh, my goodness. It's, there's nothing like it. So, like I tell you all every week, just please ask for help. And even if you don't know who to ask, a general shout out. We'll get that right guidance to you. And learning about the different the different ways, the, the things that people have spent their lifetime learning, like Caroline's talking about Mr. Paget, who spends so much time learning and meditating and channeling and getting messages, information from that type of guidance. Uh, it's it's astounding information, and of course, you take what works with you and what and leave what doesn't. But I can guarantee you, you'll see life of a totally different viewpoint. So, uh, please check you out. You know what's interesting things. about uh, Paget was that he was not a medium; he was a lawyer, and he was a oh Methodist minister. Yes, and he lost his wife. His wife passed away, so he went to a spiritualist church in the hopes of trying to connect with her. And he was told he did connect with her. I think her name is Helen. Maybe that's where I got the Helen from. I don't know. Um, Not only that, he was told that he would be receiving messages from celestial beings and Jesus. And he was like, no way. No, no, you know, not going to happen. Fought this tooth and nail. And finally, at some point, it started to come through him, and he continued to write. And his original writings have been preserved in several volumes by this foundation. Um, And just like Edgar Cayce, uh, just like ours at Sarasota Center of Light, our Reverend Dorothy Flexer was a direct voice medium, and everything that channeled through her has been preserved and uh, so that's why I admire about it, you know, so much is that every little scrap of paper, you can see his handwriting and everything. This is not someone who sought this. This is uh, Jesus picked him. And mm. why, I don't know. And uh, it was it's quite interesting. So it's not like you never know if you're going to be called upon to do something uh, in this life that is, so impact has such an impact. We just don't know. This man wasn't open to it at all. He was just trying to talk to his dead wife. That's all, <laughs> you know. And this came. So that's the other aspect. We just don't know, do we? When and, you no, know, I never don't. thought I'd be doing this work ever, and I really didn't. I was very interested in it, but I didn't think I'd be doing it, you know. So there you go. Not you just do don't you do know it, what you're you going to be with called. Passion. <laughs> Yeah, I love doing it, uh, and it's my sole purpose, and I'm very grateful to be able to do this work, very honored, and it has really changed the way I look at things. I'm still a crabby little brat a lot of times. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a one – I haven't done a 360, a little bit. You know, I'm a little bit more understanding, but that's because I have my doorkeeper, Walter, who works on me nonstop. So, you know, that's why. He's a, a guide. If it wasn't for him, I don't know what I'd be. But I'm very grateful to do this work, and and I've been picked to do a lot of it, so I'm very grateful for that. And you as well. Who would you have thought that you would be doing this? Never, um, never in a million years. I didn't know it was possible, right. quite right. frankly. And so, now that I'm doing it, um, I absolutely love it. I love the message. I love giving the messages to people. Uh, I love just being around the angelic energy. I love connecting people to something that is so necessary in our lives and reminding them that they have this profound energy of love and light just sitting around tapping its finger going, okay. Right. So, hey, right. how and about you do you... a beautiful reading. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I really, really love doing them. Um, I have another caller here, Carol Ann, uh, area code 737, just like the airplane. About area okay. code 737, thank you for your patience and good morning. Uh, hi, Miss, good morning. Uh, I'm so glad uh, you took my call. How are you doing today? Oh, wonderful. How are you? Hi, Miss. 
Um, Lisa, we have a question. All right, Lisa. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, so I listened to your show before, the night and the day. Very interesting. Learn a lot. But I, I have a, a situation that is very complex, and I try to solve it, and it's just getting more complex, more complex, and it's a human person. It's a man, and okay. um, he's just creating me more, um, more chaos, and I have to be paying more money, more money because he's so angry. Um, he's getting, you know, he's getting away with it, with everything. I just, uh, I'm just trying to find. He going to stop, or is there a solution to this? I mean, I I talk to God, the angels, but it's, I'm not getting my answer heard. I'm not getting heard. I would so say if this, you're asking, I'm, I think you need some info from both of us. Do you want to go first? Um, please, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. The only person who can stop this, you're, it's not that your prayers aren't heard, hun. It's that there is so much within our own control that we need to do, that there is no need for celestial intervention. We have all the skills that we need to stop this. Um, I feel as if this is a, a there's a spurning here and that some someone's feelings have been like he's been spurned or he is he's just agitated and an angry there's an angriness here the only way that you can stop this is to shut the door on it and shut it down uh within your rights and stop reacting uh to everything uh, i think you need better counsel and i think you need better legal advice and I would not pay anything at this point. You need to protect yourself and stop reacting. It's like a knee-jerk reaction. He pulls something, and then it's costing you. It needs to stop. Um, and that's your job is to figure out you got yourself into it. And, you know, I don't want to say, oh, well. I want to say look at how you got yourself into this and look how you're going to get yourself out of it. You do have divine intervention on your side. So, but we do have to take the steps. We have to take some practical steps to end this. So that is my impression of what's going on. Very loose because it's way too complicated to bring up uh, on the radio um, on a show like this. Laura, what is your impression here? What is needed to be done? Well, what you know, I agree with you that um, you know. Part of part of some of the things that we go to is a lesson, and it and it opens up a door and shines a light on a part of us that needs to be strengthened or developed. And Lisa, that is knowing when to stand up and and you know put your hand out. Enough is enough. No drama. You're doing the right thing by asking the God and the angels for help. Are they are they hearing your prayer? Absolutely, and then the question is, are you hearing their answer? And are you hearing right. their answer and are you paying attention to it? Are you getting nudges or guidance to do something in particular and you, you're you not doing that? Or are you doing that and things are taking time? I'm also being, I'm also being asked to bring up protection. Uh, are you protecting mm-hmm. yourself, making sure that you're protecting yourself? Is this a personal thing or a business? Because I'm hearing personal, personal protection. Okay, so personal protection. So making sure that you're taking every step possible, and I'm, they're showing me a piece of paper. So this is a legal document that you need to do in order to mm-hmm. give yourself that that personal Water protection. protection yeah. Would that be yeah the the whatever person yeah. So yeah. they're showing me that and um. And cut that cord. Uh, that's what I'm being shown, scissors. Like, you need to cut that attachment however you can do it. Right, Laura? I, I feel like there's a physical in your mind or whatever. You have to cut the cord, the the attachment to this person. It has to end. It's detrimental to um, you. I'm also being shown that you need to go, um, this is a phrase I've heard before, like when somebody goes dark, you know, when they just disappear kind of thing, you know, incommunicado. You need to go incommunicado with him. Right. Don't respond. So if there's, yes. 
Um, is this okay? And so, what do you do for work? Where do you, what do you do? Uh, I work. Um, I'm not back into what I'm doing until the until August, and I'm doing. Um, I used to do many things. I'm in the restaurant right now, but I've done other stuff. According work. Okay. All right, now, are you planning on making any moves soon? Yes, are you I planning am. on I'm moving? Trying back, yes, I'm trying okay. to get back to my career. Good, okay. Good. So that move is going to be helpful, but you need to be you need to be the one in charge. With no ifs, ands, or buts, right. you need to put your foot down, and this would be period, just period, no period. Get your personal protection taken care of. Make sure, like Carol Ann said, cut the cords, don't react. Um, there is a lot of power in not saying anything. There's a lot of power in not fanning the flames, and that power mm-hmm. needs to go to you, and you need to be standing in your power. You run your life and don't let anybody do it for you. If you're not sure uh, exactly how to make that happen, I'm right on with Caroline about finding somebody that can give you that proper advice and that healthy, healthy advice. They're bringing up healthy. So protecting yourself, cutting the cord, not responding, not reacting. And don't um, open the door again. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel bad and don't open the door to it again. I've seen women do this time and time again. They're in a better space. They're like, okay, now I can handle them. No, you can't. You know, let it go. Do not feel sorry for someone who's trying to hurt you. You just have to let this go and put them in God's hands and protect yourself. That's how it's done. Yeah, and and don't let them manipulate you you into taking care of them. Right. Okay. I'm sure that's not the answer you were looking for, but that's the best advice I think that we can give you. Okay. No, I'm, I'm clear. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Lisa. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. We're always looking for the magic bullet, and there isn't any. And I've learned, uh, what I've been told by Walter is everything is within you. You know, if you're, you know, if money is short, um, For example, you know, now I'm retired, so now I'm on a fixed income. I sound like my sisters. I'm on a fixed income. I can't buy that. Um, It took me a little while to figure that out, that I, you know, the money is not going to grow. So my answer was to develop my practice more. I had time on my hands uh, to do that, and I feel like I've been busier now than I've ever been. I've been doing this work part-time for about 12 years Finally, now I'm full-time, and I'm reaping the benefits are coming. People are coming to me. So that is fi- making me financially solvent, not that, you know, I do do a sliding scale. I do do work with people. I'm not going to get rich doing this, but it certainly is helping me, and it's helping getting my name out. So all of this was within me. I just had to figure it out. I didn't know I could design a, a beautiful website. I didn't know I would have a new radio show. I'd had one in the past. Didn't know I was going to have a new one with a fabulous producer that we have, Tiffany, who, who does everything love. for us. <laughs> um, I didn't know I would still be friends with you. We took a dance class together. I mean, my life has expanded so much. Uh, who would have thought when we were trying to bend and grind and, and sway to the music, trying to lose a few pounds, that this would happen? Right? It's it's and amazing. We met in the bathroom too. In yeah, we went in the bathroom, <laughs> and we met in class. And you came to one of my classes, yeah. and it's been really fun. Yeah. And um, so we don't know where life's going to go, but you have to all the skills that we have. I had not never done a radio show, um, didn't know what to do, didn't know a lot of people, and it's all within me. I had to have the confidence to ask, to learn, and it's all in here, you know. Um, everything that we need to know. And there's there's no reason not to ask for protection, as you state so often, to ask for help. All we have to do is ask. And it is in there. That's it so does true. come to us. Maybe not in the way we recognize it, but it is there. And you have to pay attention to what is offered. Um, and, and another thing very, is that when you're, when you're stressed out or you're really worried, it's hard to hear those messages. So when you're yes. when you're in that state, make sure you take five, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, whatever it takes, to go inside yourself. To you know, if you meditate, meditate, but spend that quiet time, asking. 
for the help, asking for the messages, and then just be quiet and listen to what comes. If you're connecting with the divine, you'll feel nothing but love and support and guidance. And you can be sure mm-hmm. that if you're asking God for help and, and helping you receive those messages clearly, just be open to receiving them and you'll get them. But sometimes they come in different ways um, that we may not expect. So just ask for it. Let's face it, you're, you're speaking a different language. You're both speaking a different mm-hmm. language and you're trying to communicate. So if you don't understand it, ask for clarity. Right. It will come. And it and comes. So for, sometimes your answers come from, like for me, it'll come walking the dog or uh, doing the dishes or digging, you know, uh, gardening, which I love. Uh, sometimes the answers come that way. And I'm not a big meditator, um, for instance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but some people are, but I'm not. And so when my brain is in neutral, when I'm doing something physical, uh, I could be trimming a rose bush or a fruit tree or planting flowers or walking the dog or just sitting outside having a cup of coffee with my dogs running around. Um, those are the times my mind is in neutral and I am receptive to what is being given to me. If I am frantic and crazy, which happens, um, I can't do anything. I, I can't even, I lost my keys. I had planned this big event and I lost my keys for two hours because I was nervous and I wasn't paying attention to what I needed to do. You know what I mean? And I still haven't found those keys, by the way, <laughs> but I know they're here someplace. But, I, you know, you sabotage yourself in your mania, you know, in your franticness. So sometimes you just have to stop, and yes. the answers will come. So that's my unprofessional advice. <laughs> wow, that's excellent advice. How about another caller, Carol Ann? Are you ready for that? Sure, love to. All right. Okay, how about uh, area code 559? Good morning. Good morning. Hi, this is Evelyn. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Evelyn. I'm so excited. What, what um, questions do you have? <laughs> um, I want to know if there's any messages from Spirit, maybe um, from my first love or open to you know family members as well. Uh, my first love, his name is Joe. Joe. Hi, Evelyn. This is Carol Ann. Hi. Um, Hi, Carol. Joe is what to you? Who Who is Joe? He, he's my first love. Um, oh, your first love. Okay, first I thought that's what you said, yeah. your first love. And you know he's passed. And you know he has passed away. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm being shown a big hand. Like I have a masculine hand here. I am reaching out to you uh, to hold your hand. I feel that I have a big hand. I get. I feel that it would feel familiar to you. Um, I feel like uh, this hand is... Uh, is not afraid of hard work, that knows uh, physical work or physical labor. Um, I feel there's a generosity and a kindness in spirit. I feel, he says to me, if I have this gentleman correctly, I want to say to you, I missed the boat with you. Would you understand what he's saying? I missed the boat with you. Yes. Um like, I feel I like I, I missed my opportunity or I didn't do enough. I understand. Okay, good. Um, such a warmth coming through this man, and I feel taken before his time. I think people would say that about his passing. I feel he wants to express thank you for whoever arranged a lot of flowers for him. And I do have a rose here for you. And what's unusual about it, it's a lovely pink rose. It's a single pink rose to you, which is a sweetness of heart is what that means to me. Uh, That's the way I would interpret it. Um, I don't know if there were children. He's talking about children. Um, And he wants to say to you, I think for you, (coughs) pardon me, Mm -hmm. That there is not too often a day that goes by that you do not think of him. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. And he says, I want to let you know I think of you daily. Um, I think you took different paths. 
perhaps. Mm, Is yeah. there a him military connection? No, him and I never had children, and he never had children either. Who um, is who did he, oh you don't have any children? Okay, I don't know why he's speaking no, about and children. He, and maybe he and he maybe he wanted to. Uh, was there any military yes, he, connection with you? My brother was in the military. He's no okay. longer in the military though. Okay, so I think he's commenting about that, letting you know that he's aware of what's going on in your life. I think this man in his younger days would have liked to have had children with you. Maybe that is what he's yeah. saying. Yes, um, we talked about that we were going to get married and have children together. That was the intent. Right, okay, that's, that's what I get. And that <laughs> feeling is still there, Okay. So that he's showing me what uh, your relationship was like. I feel that you both, so when he said, I missed the boat with you, life might have intervened or other decisions were made that prevented this uh, relationship going forward into marriage and children. So that's the regret. Um, but I want to give you, I'm sorry? Immature, immaturity. On immaturity. Both okay. Young. Yes. Yeah, okay. we're young and stupid. Yeah, Not young and stupid. Okay. He mm-hmm. thinks of you every day, and that pink rose is for you. The intent was there. If he could go back and undo things, things would be different. Uh, that's what they come forward with is sometimes regrets of life. Um, I think you would have been a stabilizing force in his life. Would you understand that? I think his oh, yeah. life would have been better. Okay, that's what he's saying. So a lot of love to you. And there's something about... Um, piece of jewelry, a piece of heart, something like that. I, I hope that you understand that. Um, it's like two pieces of one heart. He shows me, if you've ever seen those necklaces where one wears one half and one wears the other half of the heart. Uh, he gave me a necklace that has two pieces of heart. And okay, I that's was what looking he... for it. I can't remember where I left it. And it's. I thought about it. So now that I have time, I'm going to look for it. It's a... Okay, yes, it's not lost to, to him. It is not lost to I, him, okay? He wears his half okay. in spirit. Uh, when I had lost beautiful. a pendant of my mother's, uh, I was told by spirit, I, she, my mother said, I have it, no worries. So oh. uh, if it's lost, it'll be found, and if it isn't found, if he says, it's okay, I have my half, and you can imagine that you have your half. It's okay. No, I do. The it's bond is broken. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere. I just, it's. I know I have it. I just don't know where. Okay. I well, I just wanted to bring that. that to your attention and a lot of love from Joe to you. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you very wow. much for calling. You're welcome. And thank you for that beautiful connection. I appreciate it. You're welcome, dear. Mhm. Thank you so much. Have a good That's day. Beautiful, Carol Ann. He, he's very uh, a great communicator, isn't he? I mean, it's not me. It's what they tell me. See, that's that's what makes a good medium, in my opinion. Um, it's not that the medium is so wonderful. It is the fact that they are willing to jump off a cliff without a parachute, take a risk, and say, this is what he's telling me. I hope you can take it. And sometimes people don't take it, but it doesn't mean it's not true. They just may not recognize that aspect Mm -hmm. um but if they really want to communicate they will give things that evidence that is significant for you and all i am doing is relaying the message so i'm really grateful that she took that that it fit and i'm very grateful for joe because that was beautiful evidence of what spirit does so god bless him and you know we when it's sad that you know, they, they had that connection, then they weren't able to connect, but but still, um, you know, the regrets. So mm-hmm. it's really nice to know that that connection is still there, and even though they weren't able to accomplish what they wanted to at that particular time or have that relationship that they wanted to or spoke about, it still exists, uh, mm-hmm. you know, even though he's not with us per se. Beautiful. And who knows, maybe their life had a different path. You know, we don't know the yeah. whole picture. So no. uh, maybe they were supposed to do something else. And um, we all have our coulda, shoulda, woulda, 
you know, wouldn't have life yeah. have been different? Well, it's not different. This is what we have. But I think it's beautiful that he thinks of her every day. I mean, that's that's love. That's sweet. Very I think sweet. So it's very sweet. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. Love is in the air. Everywhere. Yep. Hmm. So, Carol Ann, um, you you have a show on Thursday night. You're on every yes. Thursday night on Goldilocks Productions Blog Talk Radio. You have yes. wonderful guests. You have um, shows where you've been taking callers, questions, mm-hmm. as well as telling people very, very interesting and useful information for our lives. And you you have sh- um, live readings here. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when you call in on these shows, we don't have time for a, a big reading, maybe one question only. But do yourself a favor and schedule a whole reading. Um, you will gain so much out of that. There's just not that much you can get in a very short period of time that we can spend, Carol Ann can spend with you. So do yourself a favor and you know, schedule a, a full reading, maybe half an hour, whatever it is that works for you. But you will get so much information and so much connection, and I guarantee you that it's well worth your time to do that. There's, there's just connecting with your loved ones is priceless. So take a look at that. You can reach her at carolannecary.com. Um, so just reach out and listen to her show on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio, and I know she'll be back on with us again soon. And guess my mom is listening, everybody. So uh, I Hi, just Rainey. heard from Tiffany. <laughs> I know That's she'll really nice. Your, my mother's your... name uh, was Rainey, too. Her name was Irene, but everyone called her Rainey. So um, I identify with, with your mom, your mom and, and your family is so delightful. Uh, your Brazilian connection is wonderful. So they've given me an international flair. I am very grateful for that. I can say I read people from Brazil. And uh, I wish your mom a lot of healing. You have a wonderful family. And your husband's Thank delightful. You. Just delightful. So. Thank you, Carol Ann. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for for sharing your prayers for healing for my mom. Thank you for your time and checking in with Carol Ann and myself. And don't forget your angels and all of your guides, your ancestors, your loved ones in spirit. They're all there showering you with love, with guidance, with support, um, with so many gifts. So remember that. Remember that you're never alone. Remember that you're unconditionally loved. Remember that you're special. And you stay in touch with me, please. Um, I thank you for those of you that have sent in your angel stories to me. I'm still looking for as many as you want to send me. You can reach me at laura at angelsandhealinglight.com. And if you've had a story where an angel has helped you intervene in your life somehow, I really would love to hear about it. So uh, please Go ahead and send that in. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And next week we have, oh, my goodness, it's the 18th of June already. Can you believe it? Next week is going to be healing week, so please check in for that. And then the following week on the 25th, I have the wonderful Joanne Leo, who is incredible, a numerologist. She's a master numerologist. She's amazing. Um, please check in and stay with us. So thank you, Tiffany. Thanks to my family. Thanks to all of you. And thank you to Carol Ann Curie, my special guest and psychic medium extraordinaire. Thank you for those messages of love and healing that you're bringing to my listeners. And I will see you all, I guess, next week. Thanks, Carol Ann. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Many blessings, everybody. Bye now.